Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at integration using data, and it's going to be very similar to what we've been doing, which is a good thing. So I've got a problem here where uh, water is flowing into a tank over a 24-hour period, and I've got a rate at which the water is flowing. That's, so that's obviously going to be a derivative. Is given at various times, and it's measured down here in gallons per hour, and T is measured in hours. So like at time T equals zero, we're pouring water into the tank at the rate of eight gallons per hour, and it changes throughout the 24-hour time period. Originally, the tank contains 150 gallons of water when T equals zero. That's going to be huge. There was already water in the tank, so we need to pay attention to things like that. All right, so I'm going to estimate the number of gallons of water in the tank at the end of 24 hours by using a midpoint Riemann sum. We've done this before, so hopefully this is going to be complete review. We're going to do three subintervals. We're going from 0 to 24, so we are going to have to go by 24 minus 0. This is B minus A over N. It told us three subintervals. We're going to go by eights. So my first subinterval is going to be from 0 to 8, and we have to use the height at the midpoint. Now, to get the exact answer, I would be doing the integral from 0 to 24 of r of t dt. If I knew that function perfectly, this would give me the amount of water in the tank at 24 minus the amount of water in the tank at 0. That's what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. But we, can, we don't know what r of t is as a function, so we must estimate this. So we're going to estimate that with our Riemann sum. And of course, we're going to add w of 0 to both sides. So we would be adding 150 to this. So 150 plus this, and that would cancel my w of 0. So we've seen this before. So we're going to do 150 plus an estimate. And that estimate is a midpoint Riemann sum. So we're going to estimate this integral. This is going to estimate how much water accumulates on top of the 150. So we're going to do our width of 8, our first interval is from 0 to 8, and our height comes not at the left end point, not at the right end point, but at the midpoint, because that's what I was told to do. So the midpoint height is 8.8. .8. And then we're going to add this to our second interval is from 8 to 16, so that has a width of 8 again, and our height we're going to do at the midpoint of 9.2, and then plus our width of 8, 16 to 24, and then our height at our midpoint is 8.1. And if we have a calculator, we would go ahead and answer this. Without a calculator, we're stopping right there so that we don't make any mistakes. So there's the computations that lead to our answer, and I did use a calculator on this. This worked out to be 358.8 gallons is how much water is estimated to be in the tank using a midpoint Riemann sum. Now we're going to do something new here. We're going to estimate the number of gallons of water in the tank at the end of 24 hours by using a trapezoidal sum. Now this is technically not a Riemann sum, but it's still a powerful approximation tool. A trapezoidal sum is the average of the left and right mid uh, sorry, of the left and the right endpoints. And the way you find the area of a trapezoid is you average the bases. So we technically are going to do, or not technically, we're exactly going to do the left endpoint plus the right endpoint, and we're going to average them. And then you always multiply this times the height. That's your area of your trapezoid formula. So my estimate is going to be 150 plus. So we're going to use a trapezoid on this first interval from 0 to 8. And the way you do that is you do your width. My width is 8, but now we're going to average the bases. So we're going to do 8 plus 9.3, and we're going to divide that by 2. So that would be the first area of a trapezoid, and that's the average of the left and the right endpoint. Plus, the next width is also 8, and we're going to do the 9.3 is the left and 8.9 is the right on this interval from 8 to 16, so we're going to average those. 9.3 plus 8.9, and we're dividing that by 2, and then we've got one more, so the width is 8, and averaging 8.9 and 6.7, so we're going to do 8.9 plus 6.7 divided by 2. And that worked out to be, of course, without a calculator, we would leave that alone, that worked out to be 357 point, um, no, I'm sorry, it was 354. 354.4 gallons. So that's something that's new, is a trapezoidal approximation. All right, so now they're giving me a model, a model for this, um, or a model for W of T. 
is a model for, I guess for RFT. Okay, so I, I probably shouldn't have called this WT up here. So we're going to just, let's use A for the amount of water in the tank. There we go. We're going to use A's up there. I know that's ticky tack, it doesn't really matter much, but I'm, I'm, I want to use different letters. So they're modeling R of T by this function here, and they're calling it something different because it's not exactly, it's just a model for that. And we're going to use this model to find the number of gallons of water in the tank at the end of 24 hours. So we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral from 0 to 24 of W of T. If we integrate that, this will give me W of 24 minus W of zero. And we were told at the beginning that there was, I guess I'm going to do like capital W of 24 minus capital W of zero here to, to let you know that this is the antiderivative. So we're going to call these capitals. And we were already told that there was 150 gallons of water in the tank at the beginning. So our answer is going to be 150 by adding W of zero to both sides plus the integral from 0 to 24 of this function they're giving us to model the situation, to model how much water is going into the tank. So they told me it was W of T, so I'm just going to write it as W of T dt. And so that's what I'm going to do on my calculator, and I did that on my calculator, and the answer that I got was 357.36. So apparently it's a pretty good model. It was close to my midpoint and my trapezoidal sum. Uh, the last thing is, again, something old. We've done this before. We're going to do the average rate of water flow and using that model. So that means we have to do 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of that model that they gave me of w of t dt. And I did this on my calculator as well and that says 8.64. And I want to make sure that that makes sense. This is the average rate of water flow 8.64 which would be gallons per hour and going up to the table, would you believe that 8.64 is the average height of these numbers? We go 8 up to 9, but then back down all the way to 6.7, and that's a reasonable answer. So you're going to be dealing with data tomorrow and working problems. The only thing really that's going to be new is the fact that we've thrown in a trapezoidal sum now. And again, technically, that's not really a Riemann sum, but it is a very powerful approximation tool. So I will see you guys tomorrow.